David Frum, thank you very much indeed. I'm going to throw the whole issue open to the audience in a few minutes, so please have your questions ready. Um, David Frum, there's no pleasing the United States, is it? You wanted democracy uh, in the Middle East. You got a democratic vote. Uh, you didn't like dealing with Arafat, so you didn't want to deal with him. You don't like dealing with Hamas. What do you think the Palestinians are finally going to vote someone you like or, or are going to bother to speak to? The, the United States absolutely accepts the reality of this election result. The pri the pri the the challenge and wants now, to undermine it, as uh, we hear. Uh, the challenge now is to ensure that there is a second election. Hamas is not an organization that accepts the principles of democracy. It, is an, it has a very different kind of ideology. It just espoused them. It, it went and, to the ballot box and submitted itself to the ballot. Uh, and the vote of the see, Palestinian people. Let us see whether it does it again. That, that is the challenge. The U.S. The didn't mind talking to the IRA when it was blowing up the cabinet of your closest ally. The, uh, but you don't want to speak to Hamas the, when they're fairly voted in the United States by the did, Palestinians. The United States did not begin talking with the IRA until the British government went along with the idea. The British government, the, the ultimate protector of the liberties and freedom and security of the British people. They were engaged, and so the United States followed. Oh, um, it was pleased to have fundraising for the IRA on well, the streets of the United States when they were blowing up uh, the was, British cabinet? That, no, that, I don't think so. That was, a, that was a scandal and a disgrace, but it's also true right now that Hamas... But it shows United, double standards, doesn't it? Well, I, uh, the United States passed laws in 1994 and 1996 that made it a crime to raise money for terrorist organizations like Hamas, which is why so many of... Uh, which is why Mr. Cohen has spent so many hours in courtroom with the, on behalf of those people, because the, under, under American law since 1996, raising money for terrorists is a crime as well. What do you want Fatah to do? What do you want Hamas to do, rather? Become like Fatah? Um, I don't think it's very... I don't think it is very probable that Hamas is going to change. Um, Hamas is what Hamas is. They're Your president thinks they will. Uh, president Bush said the other day he thought power would moderate them. Um, president, uh, the president was expressing a hope. The president is an optimist, and that's his job to look on the bright side. But realistically, they are what they are, and they pose the threat that they threat pose, and not just to Israel, because Hamas does not have the power to, uh, to destroy the state of Israel. What Hamas has the power to do is to destroy the peace of this region. David Trump, thank you very much indeed. Gentleman up there. I wanted to, to ask, to what extent is the political wing of Hamas independent of his militant actions? Uh, and also to how close can we draw the parallel between the political wing of Hamas and the IRA in its uh, movement towards normalization and towards uh, the mainstream? Well, if, if the question is posed to me, I am not an expert on the demarcation line between the military and political wings of Hamas. And I really don't think it matters because the Palestinian people overwhelmingly voted for Hamas. They voted for Hamas that has a political wing that provides social services, and they voted, in essence, for a military wing that has served as the National Guard of the occupied territories. What you do raise is a very interesting question, though, and, 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 and that has to do with there is a dramatic difference, and it really comes down to racial and religious and cultural superiority. In my country, we were enamored with the noble struggle of the IRA, which really wasn't about an occupation, but was about a religious battle within Belfast in the north. The battle in Palestine has nothing to do with Muslim and Jew. The battle in Palestine has to do with an occupation. There's really, at the bottom line, no parallel to the life and death struggle in Palestine, where the Palestinian people have spoken. There is no downside for the international community to say, okay, Hamas, we will give you a chance. Okay, David Frum, come in. I think Mr. Cohen has made a very important concession that everybody should um, keep in mind. There is this distinction between the civilian or the civil uh, uh, side of Hamas and the military is completely specious. Um, they don't have international accounts. It is one and the same. That if you support one, you are supporting the other, as, as he said. Uh, it is also, and, and we know what that organization stands for, and that is the destruction of the state of Israel and presumably the deaths of the people living inside it. That is the motion that is the challenge to the honor of this House. Will you vote for that? Do you and think no the understand military what, what, wing of Hamas has done nothing for 13 months at all? They've agreed to a hudna while Israel has slaughtered Palestinians, 35 of them this past week, 22 of them women and children. Because, Who because, is the terrorist be, be, right because now? Because Hamas's strategy is a strategy for war, and because it knows the, you know that, Hamas? that the, the you voters... Can, 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 can he finish I, I, the answer? I can, can read. He, I can read. And because it knows that the voters of the, of the Palestinian Authority do not want war, they have abated their colors. But, un, but they, have, they, they are what they are. And you know well, because you know them. 
You know Far better are. than you, sir. Right. It's exactly to, to what you, said. they are an academic interest. You've never met them. You've never been to Palestine. You've never been to the territories. You've never once you, had a chance to speak to a Palestinian you, 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 under occupation. You, you know what they stand for and what they intend. I know and what that they stand is, for. And that is the issue that is before this House, what they intend, what they intend to do to Israel but will not be able to, but what they genuinely intend for this whole region. What is the downside to sitting for a year and giving Hamas an opportunity to try to that's, bring some sanity to the killing fields? That's not what they're asking. Other than the fact that your theories would be rejected. They're asking for billions of dollars. No, they don't need money from the United States. Can we just let them finish, please? Moreover, would the international community recognize Hamas would also mean recognizes Hamas's charter. I would remind this audience on that when the international community rejected the white apartheid regime, it rejected the very fundamental values upon which the regime was based upon and built upon. Should the, should the international community accept the, the, the Arab the, League the, definition the, of, of the international community would be giving a legitimacy to a movement that does not represent only itself, but it represents a way and a view of thinking about Islam. The reality. Oh, okay, we have a lot of hands appearing in the audience. I want to take a question from the gentleman in the first row there. Dr. Fromm, uh, between 1992 and 1995, the United States and the international community accepted Slobodan Milosevic, who was responsible for about 200,000 people killed and slaughtered in, a, in the most brutal way. And he was accepted as a legitimate negotiator for the peace process in Balkans. And, and more than that, uh, uh, local butchers in Bosnia were also accepted as, as negotiators, like Radko Mladic and uh, and Dr. Karadzic, and why couldn't the international community here also accept Hamas, who did much less evil? David, thank you. I, I accept uh, your parallel, and I think that uh, they, I hope that, that uh, the leaders of Hamas will meet the same fate as the as Slobodan Milosevic and be hauled in front of an international war crimes tribunal and punished for their crimes. But that wasn't that wasn't well, the question, was but it? That, but the question, but the question ignores the actual story. The facts of the story are that Slobodan Milosevic was treated as an enemy of humanity and, and but is they now, did sit down and engage with him for a fairly long time, didn't they? Uh, they, uh, they they ignored what happened in Bosnia. Engaged. It was only when Kosovo took place later that measures were taken against him. They, uh, there, was a, there, was, there was constant threat. They signed the Dayton Agreement with him, for they're, heaven's sake. They're backed by constant threats of force and with no illusions about what he was. And maybe you may not like the speed and pace with which the United States and its friends went to war against Slobodan. Maybe the, uh, but I, I do not imagine that you are saying that the, United States, the, the end of the process should be that the United so States and the West goes to war as against Hamas. As long as we Sorry. can buy a terrorist, it's okay. But if one is elected into office, it's not okay. So I, want to, I want to bring the questioner back in. Are you happy with the answer? I believe that your distinction between terrorism and non-terrorism, non-violence, lays basically in the fact that one terrorist group is institutionalized, institutionalized like, uh, like Serbia was, for example, and like Israel is. So Israel and Serbia were committing institutionalized crimes. And that, that is basically the only difference between them and Hamas. So why is it that we can accept institutionalized Crime, war crimes which bring much more human cost and we can't accept well, one group which tends to, which wants to evolve in a political legitimate movement. Sorry, I, ac I accept your comparison of Slobodan Milosevic to Hamas. Obviously the con uh, comparison to Israel is completely misplaced. Why? Um, because it, uh, Slo Slobodan Milosevic was engaged as Hamas, as Hamas with its charter is committed to. Both Milosevic engaged in genocidal acts, and Hamas, if it uh, has, is pledged to in genocidal acts, and if it ever has the power, will try to achieve them. The Israeli state is engaged, as all states under the United Nations Charter are allowed to do. The Israeli right of state has ignored every single resolution of the United Nations since its exception, it, it, and it the has, United States has vetoed every single has, one. Okay. The position you argue for is if we can control people on the ground, they're good, okay. and if we can't, we can't recognize okay.